don't want the root canal. <laughs> No. Who, I'm who hoping that he'll never have to do it, and I could buy a, like a PlayStation Five with that money that I saved. <laughs> it's about the same price. <laughs> well, boys, uh, let's start the show. This is one stage at a time. Uh, you might think it's a dentistry podcast, but you'd be <laughs> wrong. Uh, and today on the program, we're talking about Doom from 1993. We're talking about E3 M3. Uh, I'm Andy. That's Aaron and Sam. <laughs> Um, hopefully none of us are going to have fucked up teeth by the end of the year, but you never know. Uh, but before we get started with uh, the main idea of today's program, uh, let, let's talk about a little video game news. Let, let's check Ooh. in with, with the news of the day, folks. <laughs> yeah, look, look at that, that stock ticker, you know, uh, the... the Pop up the Chiron on the bottom of the screen that's just like scrolling, <laughs> scrolling headlines. <laughs> because we do have some gaming news going on here, folks. Uh, at the time that this uh, recording is being made, it's November 4th. But by the time this releases, <sighs> we should have a brand new console generation on our hands. Oh, you're right. Uh, yeah. I believe Xbox Series X comes out on the 10th, uh, which should be yesterday at the time this releases. And uh, PS5 comes out on the 12th, I think, yep. mm -hmm. which is tomorrow. So what do you think, uh, Sam? Uh, if you if you don't have to spend all your money on a root canal, will you be buying the PS5 at launch? I didn't want to, but I the latest Demon Souls gameplay yes. trailer got me really, really excited because I that's... That has always been my favorite Souls game. Like, I've always loved that more than the other ones just because I really like... Um, it has a hub world and it yes. feels more kind of old school almost. Yeah. Um, and it was the first one I played and it was the first, it was the first one that was like, I don't know. I have no, no, um, expectations of what, what it is. And the company, it's like blue something. I can't remember the name of them. They're the ones that did the, uh, eco and shadow of the Colossus remastered. Um, they have done a fantastic job. I mean, it looks different i mean like it's the same game all the, they haven't changed any of the ai or anything but the animations are like faster it's almost like bloodborne we're quicker it's just it looks a little different now are they um, adding any additional levels or oh that's the room yeah there's a rumor because there was a a whole like and demon souls it's you go into the main hub and there's i think six or seven uh like walls like arc stones right mm -hmm. there's there's like the six arc stones around the hub and they're all different world. But there was one, the, the Frost Giants realm, that was shattered. And they put some more reason. But it was because they ran out of time. And they have the assets in the original game that are, are unfinished. And in the very first uh, reveal trailer, there was a snowy, icy level. And it's hinted that they went in and finished that. That, that oh, there'd be a whole oh, new war level that wasn't in the game. Yeah. Uh, and, and I think one of the big things about this generation that I think not a lot of people are really talking about that's going to like really make the biggest difference in like the jump of fidelity, like visual fidelity are 4k HDR TVs. I think that people who don't have 4k aren't going to see as big of a difference, at least graphically. They'll, they'll be there like, uh, they'll be like about 50, 50. You're going to get, you're going to get the RTX lighting. Like the lighting will be way better. And that actually goes a long ways in video games. Uh, but you're not going to get the resolution and like 4K 60 frames is a huge selling point. But watching watching that video on my TV was like I was like okay fuck I don't why I don't want to buy at launch. I always say I'm not going to buy at launch, and I buy every fucking thing at launch. Just <laughs> when you think you've gotten out, they pull you back in. Because you know there's going to be a PS5 Pro, yeah. and I've got a PS4 with a PS4 Pro sitting on top of it right over here, <laughs> both of which I got. Well, I didn't get the PS4 on launch, but I got it. I got the Pro that Christmas. Uh, so, yeah, I, well, but I won't get an Xbox because everything that's exclusive on there, I can get on my computer. So there's real no point. Well, let's, let's take a look at Let's do a rundown on the launch titles here. Uh, PS5, you already mentioned Demon Souls, which I agree that I'm very excited about that. Um, we've also got Spider-Man, Miles Morales, Godfall, Sackboy, A Big Adventure, Assassin's Creed Valhalla, and of course, Bugsnax. Uh, of course. 
the game that's taking the internet by storm, Bug Snacks. <laughs> the game's gonna fucking suck. I just know it. Like <laughs> it's it's like it looks. It's all got all this mystery behind it, but the game is gonna fucking suck. I bet there's nothing there. I bet it's just like so wacky and weird, and, and they won't tell you what the gameplay is, or maybe they have and I haven't seen it. But like, it's gonna be one of those games that's gonna be like five bucks in a used bin in the future. Like it's gonna be one of those games. You know? Aaron, what are your thoughts on Bug Snacks? It's gonna dethrone. R- Roblox? Is that what the kids are playing now? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's gonna it, deep thrown among us is what it's gonna do. Yeah, it's gonna be the new hit. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah, gonna yeah, be the new hit for the next generation. It's AOC gonna, it, is gonna play everybody's bug snacks gonna be asking on Twitch. for give me them bug snacks. Give me the bug snacks, mom. And they'll be like, You have bug snacks at home, and it'll be bug bits and they'll be pissed. But no, it's, it's gonna be it. I have no idea what bug snacks is. It's uh, <laughs> It's so it's it's from the company that made Octodad, so it's uh, like super zany and probably more like style than actual game. But you, you play as like I, from what the trailer looks like, which is insane. You play as like uh, almost like uh, like Muppet. stuffed animal looking Muppet type creatures, and there's like all these little bug insect type things, but they're food. So there's like little strawberries that have insect legs and googly eyes. Burger like beetle. Centipedes. Yeah. Burger beetles. But then when you eat them, you like grow parts of them on yourself. So as you're going through the okay. game, you start like the denizens are like, you know, more and more food like. And like there's one trailer that now if it went this way, it'd be fantastic. But there's one trailer that made it seem like kind of freaky and almost scary. And I was like, OK, I'm on board with yeah. that. But this, or but I don't know what to think. Who knows? Yeah, like at the It'll very be... end, like this, like weird chimera-looking creature bursts out of the trees with like yeah. all kinds of weird parts. Here's my all. prediction: <laughs> it's like a Cronenberg monster. Yeah. For like two weeks at launch, or whenever the game comes out, it'll be all over the place because it'll be if it's weird enough, people will stream it on Twitch, and it'll and it'll catch off, and it'll it'll be really hot for like two weeks, and then then no one will ever talk about it ever again. Yep. That's kind of my my thought. I think Demon Souls will be played by a, a, a like everyone as well. I think that'll oh, be yeah. the game that's the the biggest one, um, just because so many people already love that that game and uh, it, it, Souls games are great. Uh, yep. The Godfall is the one I'm curious to see how that goes. That's got the biggest chance of being good or bad. It all depends on. I don't know much about that one. It's Is- basically melee destiny, like a uh, looter shooter, but it's like, oh, with yep, the I'm already, action- yeah. I'm already out. <laughs> My eyes you have know, already glazed over. <laughs> action R- like action RPG where you're constantly grinding out quality uh, armor and weapons and stuff. I like those games, but you know, it, it, it really is hit or miss with if it's good or not based on mm-hmm. the uh, games as a service model, you know, where they, where they, they want you to keep playing the game for like five, like forever, basically. Uh, I, I'm not too excited about that because there's tons of them out and it'd have to do something really cool. Maybe like if it's on sale and I got a group of friends that want to play it, like that's what we do with Destiny. Yeah, uh, yeah. But right now, the only thing, I mean, I was just ignoring it until I saw the last video for Demon's Souls. I'm like, oh man, yeah, can I wait? Souls does look pretty sick. I, mm-hmm. I got to agree with that. The decision became harder because at first it was like, not, I'm just going to wait because uh, until it got delayed, it was like, boom, uh, Cyberpunk was coming out. Right, right, Now it's right. in December. But and now I also play World of Warcraft and the new expansion is coming out at the end of the month. So as much as I wanted, I, I'll, I'll, I should probably just wait um, until a couple other things. I mean, I don't even know if I could get it because you can't pre-order it anywhere anymore. Uh, how much is it like 500 bucks oh, okay 4.99 um, 4.99 that's like th- that's nothing also a digital only version right yeah yeah both have digital only versions but the playstation 5 digital just doesn't have a cd-rom uh or dv whatever the fuck blu-ray player <laughs> CD-ROM. Yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah, date, yeah. I'm very old people listening <laughs> blu-ray um, ROM. It's, it's got a floppy drive hd blu-ray um disc drive uh but it's the same exact machine, whereas the Xbox X and S, the price is lower on the S, but it, it's not as strong. It's not as powerful as the X. Well, let's do a rundown on the Xbox Series X launch titles. Uh, 
for some comparison. We've got uh, Assassin's Creed Valhalla. I guess that's on both. Yeah, it's everywhere. Uh, I don't even know what the fuck's going on with that series anymore, but I guess you're Vikings in this one. We've got Watch Dogs, Legion, uh, Dirt 5, Yakuza, Like a Dragon, uh, Tetris Effect Connected, Gears Tactics, uh, and Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War. But I think that's actually the day after it launches. But And almost all of those games are already out on other systems. And like, there's already reviews yeah. for Like a Dragon. Um, I saw people playing Dirt 5 on stream. Uh, ta- Tactics is on Xbox um, Game Pass already. Um, Cold War will be out on PC and everything. Both there's a lot of uh, cross generational stuff on that list. I think there was a yeah. little, not as many on the place. I think Miles Morales was the only one that was cross. Uh, no, possibly, well, I, yeah. Assassin's Creed as well. I, it sounds like yeah, Xbox is having is just having more trouble getting like exclusives out there. Although now that they own Bethesda, Zenimax, and Software. Uh, maybe that's going to change. Yeah, it sounds well, they like kept, they saw the writing on the wall. They lost. Like, uh, and so they're like, let's spend some of that money, shall we, boys? <laughs> I think they lost the director for Halo Infinite, like, last that month. That sucks. Yeah, so that got delayed. Um, but again, I mean, for if, me... If I, if I cared about Halo, that would suck. I, <laughs> <laughs> I'm imagining that I'm a person that cares about Halo, and I'm imagining that that sucks. <laughs> I, uh, but almost every game you mention, I would be able to play on my pc uh so it's not a huge for me the xbox like i got really excited about the um xbox series s because it uh it it had the same specs like it was 1440p 120 frames per second in which i could play on my monitor oh that's really cool because not a lot of systems want to go higher than 60 consoles at least you know but then i was like wait a minute i can already do that on my pc now and if I plug it into my TV, I can do 40, 4K, 60 frames per second. So I don't need any Xbox at all. I think that's kind of what they're banking on with like, you know, the whole Xbox Game Pass. And It's awesome. It's actually yeah. really cool. And, you know, Microsoft Windows games and everything. Like, I think that I don't think that consoles are going to be a huge priority for Microsoft going forward. They'll probably still put them out. But like, I don't think they're really worried about sales at all. You know, like. I think yeah. I think they're just they they real they realized that they were make they weren't losing money by making their games available on PC. Yeah, I think that was the big thing. And Sony Sony's dipping their toe. They released um, uh, Horizon Zero Dawn on PC mm-hmm. as kind of like a test. So I think uh, and that was kind of a big deal. The Venn diagram um, between console and PC is slowly becoming dude, a circle. It, I kind of want to get, depending on the performance of Monster Hunters, uh, was it? Uh, uh, Rise or? Rise, yeah, yeah Rise. Okay. I would be willing to get a, a Nintendo Switch Pro if they came out with one. Ooh, <clears> there are rumors, but there's always rumors about the Nintendo yeah. Switch Pro. <laughs> Only yeah. if, I would buy a Pro for just that game if it made it play better. That's how much I like Monster Hunter and how much I expect it to not play very well. After playing, uh, I actually, I played like 200 something hours almost on Monster Hunter on PlayStation and a friend of mine who hadn't played it got it on Steam and we all got it again. So we're playing it again. Uh, uh, so speaking of new generations, like, it, you know, I'm, I'm not uh, a big like cutting edge type guy, um, but it's always interesting to me that like, and this is a trend we've been seeing for a long time where Sony and Microsoft um, gradually like follow that, you know, that pretty obvious, like uh, straightforward path of like improving and iterating the technology and like getting closer to a PC. Uh, whereas Nintendo still is trying to go with like some kind of unique hardware gimmick, you know, to justify still having like a console, um, not to mention all their exclusive first party titles, but uh, it's, it would be interesting, like, you know, if what you're saying happens, you know, in a generation or two where there's just not consoles anymore, uh, I would, will, I feel N- like, will Nintendo stick it out? Yeah, I think they would. I was in my mind when I said that it was like, I, but I would have a Nintendo. Yeah. I, I wouldn't, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I I don't think I would want Nintendo to make games on PC. I you don't know, like, I, agree. I kind of like that they do the dumb shit like the weird goofy gimmicky shit because mm-hmm. they're not a they're not 
it's like I feel like if they if they did anything too close to what uh, Sony and Microsoft did, it'd be like like uh, losing their innocence. You know, I know they're a company and they still do <laughs> things like a company, but like they're a video game. They're a game company. They've always yeah. been games, and that was it. They've never yeah. done anything else. They see themselves as more of like a toy or an entertainment company. And, and I feel yeah. Sorry, they've always the, they've always said that um, for them, software and hardware are they go together and they can't be separated. So they just refuse to consider releasing software on something that's not hardware that they yeah. like, you know, put everything into and put all this thought and time into. Now, I wouldn't mind if they, you know, got back on track with like, I, you, know, you know, since after the GameCube, it's been like their consoles are always behind, mm-hmm. you know? Uh, so I'm hoping as, as if they, their idea is to, to just have one system that's both Game Boy and system. Uh, as we move forward, if they stay with that, it'll be it'll get nice. I don't. I just that's the only thing I'd wish if they came out with a better like. Let's just let's take Game Boy back away and have like a hardcore like great system. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we can give me cool stuff, but I don't. I don't like playing in handheld mode. I, I even when I depends. had a it Game depends. Boy. I, I never, the only time I ever played my Game Boy, not on my couch or in my bed was when I was on the airplane. Yeah, yeah. Well, that, it's for it's for travel. Like if you're, if you got a bus ride or you're on an airplane or whatever. Yeah, yeah. but but it depends on the game too. Like some games are so intense um, that maybe handheld mode just isn't going to work as well. Um, but but I, I agree with you. I usually play in docked mode. It's really sacrificing. It's becoming more and more noticeable as like, we move into the next generation, you know, how much better will a switch pro really be? Um, I don't, I think that their IPs are strong enough that it doesn't matter. Yeah. I agree. Too much, but, but, but you're right. It would be nice if they could compete graphically, uh, you know, with, with the, with the big boys. I feel like they pulled a fucking <laughs> typical Nintendo move. They made mm-hmm. the GameCube. It was badass as fuck mm-hmm. and it didn't sell as well. So like, yep. well, we're never doing that again. Yep, <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> they like, were God like, "Damn it!" They just decided, you know what? Fuck graphics. It doesn't matter. Yeah, we're graphics just do don't we want. work for Nintendo. That's I what waggle my arm around like this. Yeah. That's what they yeah. want. Waggle my like, arm around. <laughs> fuck, fuck online. Fuck graphics. We're gonna do motion controls. God, I or, would just or, be so happy if they fix their online. That's all that I would. Be well, all you know what they have to do? Like it's like they always have like they make two steps forwards, one step back, right? They, they they did a great step forward with online, having games that are online, you can play it, but like no no like Ethernet port on the dock. You yeah, know, like you have to you, buy you an adapter. You can buy an adapter? You can, yeah. Oh, if you okay. wanted that's, to, I didn't yeah, know you'd that. Have to. There's like there's like USB adapters or something. Because that that's why people like Smash is so hard to play online because it's everyone's on Wi Fi and there's yep. all this delay and everything. And then it's it's still like it's like weird, like well, we've heard of the internet, but we're going to make our own internet. That, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, kind of they, dumb shit. It's like they, you feel like in, in Kyoto at NCL headquarters, they've done like a cost benefit analysis where they're like, okay, this is the degree that our customers will be angry at us if like if we have like a, a shitty half assed internet. This is the degree to which like, you know, that doesn't matter because uh, like, you know, it's going to cost us this and this much amount of money. And we've made a calculation that like, they're going to buy it anyway. So we're just going to go with the shitty version because well, we don't and, think it's going to matter. It's and like that they also in- don't think much about what happens outside of Japan still. Yeah. That's a lot true. of Japanese companies are like that. It's like, well, no one's complaining about that here in Japan. So yeah, yeah. you just don't understand. It's Okay. Gaijin sama, you you, you don't understand what it's. It's so you know, yeah. Well, you don't need to come over here to our house and try and tell us how to make games. But 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 at the same time, that 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 doesn't make sense because Sony is a Japanese company. Yeah, but they're they're more global though, right? Yeah, I think that's part of it. Yeah, they've spent more time with more products and a larger business. You know, movies. You know, from movies to fucking like TVs, washing machines. I'm pretty sure they've had a Sony washing machine at some point. Probably, they've had to deal with the whole world, not just America. But you know, there's Mr. Miyamoto going like, "No, I read books. I don't watch movies on the internet." Yeah, you know, yeah fucking yeah. shit. God damn it. He's like, I, "I play my guitar and I go for long hikes in the countryside." <laughs> well, uh, Aaron, um, 
Before we wrap it up, me, me and Sam have given our opinions. Well, how do you feel about next gen gaming? Are, are you are you a luddite? Will will you stay gloriously ignorant in the past, or will you dip a toe into these future generations? As much as I want to, uh, I've completely missed out on this most recent generation of PS4 and Xbox One. Completely, I think I've played the Xbox One a handful of times. Someone else's, other people's houses. I don't think I've even touched a PlayStation Four. Um, so I would love to catch up with some current gen systems. Unfortunately, as is always the case, I have other things that I should probably spend my $500 yeah. plus for games on. So I probably won't pick any of these up. It seems like the time might be ripe to pick up last gen. <laughs> that's, hey, that's, you know, move. it's still, there are some amazing games on mm-hmm. PS4. Uh, let, uh, the Last of Us re, uh, remake and the new one, God of War, was fantastic. Mm-hmm. You can still play Spider Man. Spider Man was really good too. I've missed uh, out on any of the Gears of. Were there was there more than one Gears of War on the Xbox? There, yeah, uh, I don't know what happened to those. Really, I think <laughs> you know, it's kind of like eh. you know they kept making uh, you know uh, Friday the Thirteenth movies too. You know, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> but you could get. Um, Uncharted Remastered Trilogy plus Uncharted 4. All of those are fucking I did want to play Uncharted 4. Yeah, there's like, so I might catch up on the most previous generation. Or who knows? I might get a crazy hair and pick up the newest one. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, we'll see. My brain might break after this election and say, it fuck is, it, YOLO, right? Uh, quick uh, pretty, sidebar. Did you guys see the photos of Tom Holland as Nathan Drake in the Uncharted yeah. movie? Yeah. I looks did. like crap, honestly. Dude, you know who's oh, I thought it looked yeah. pretty good. Yeah, yeah. Hey, I'm not feeling it. it he's it, too it, young. Yeah. He's, he's too young. young. He's, he's a baby. Too young. And, I mean, and Mark yeah, Wahlberg's it's supposed playing to be Sully. young Nathan Drake. I mean, you know. it should have been uh, the guy from uh, Serenity, and then Bruce Campbell as Sully. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, why not? Why not go a step further and just make it the cast of uh, Burn Notice? <laughs> <laughs> now, my name is Nathan Drake. <laughs> I used to be a treasure hunter. <laughs> I mean, at this point, there's no way the movie will be good. It doesn't matter who's in it. Mark Wahlberg is Sully, which is so weird. That's uh, weird I don't know. Me, yeah. Yo, yo, Nathan, bro, we got we got to go steal the sinking gold before the Russian guy gets it. You seen the cigar I have? Oh man, wow. I'm not I'm not feeling it. It's fine because the the games are basically the movies I always wanted anyway. So. Yeah, they're right. movies anyway. Yeah, and the last one really wraps everything up really nice. Uh, and it's it's really good. I think that Nathan Fillion is too old at this point. I liked him yeah. in that like short little film he made, the like five minute Uncharted one he made. Did you see that? Nope. Really entertaining. I thought it was really entertaining, and they did a good job. Uh, but I think that he's too old for the character now, unless he was in like the Twilight years of his thieving career. Yeah. Now I don't uh, think he should do like it. an old man Logan, but for Nathan Drake. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I think that be starting off at... young makes sense. They want to be able to make a whole series, right? So it's like... I don't think he's the right... I don't think... I don't feel him at all. I think. Well, have you seen him in anything decision. besides Spider-Man? Yes. I mean, yeah. but I know... You know no, I haven't. Sam, but, but I will ask you next. But I don't feel him at all as Nathan Drake. I mean, I don't... I don't know. I just don't see it. Yeah, he's he's like too scrawny. Like uh, he's not like uh, I don't see him as like a buff action hero type. He's Spider Man. Yeah, but Spider Spider Man's not that. Yeah, Spider Man. I mean, like he's a smaller guy, but he's like fucking ripped. He could tear our heads off, man. (laughs) Yeah, but he has superpowers. He's not like super jacked or anything. No, I mean, I mean, Tom Holland is super jacked. Have you seen his workout shit? I've seen. I don't care what he looks like. I yeah, he can rip our heads off. No, he's slim, he's slender and lithe. Yeah, he's yeah, not he's, a beefcake. Yeah, he's not a beefcake. Like <laughs> he's not a sassy beefcake. Like like Nathan Drake should be. Yeah, that's, <laughs> you know why can't I just have a sassy shirtless beefcake in my Uncharted movie? Fine, you know, I'll like my shirt off. <laughs> oh baby, it's like we don't want Wesley to be Nathan Drake. We want Riker to be Nathan Drake. That's exactly you know? right. That's exactly that's what's right. What's happening? You know. I'm not saying Tom Holland's not awesome and amazing, and I really like him as an actor, but I just don't, I'm not and feeling. I, and I'm not saying it's going to be good. Yeah. I'm saying that I think Tom Holland's a good actor. I, I think, think that he, he looks is. the part. I really do think they did a good job making him look the part. He, we can disagree on that. I think this is a poor, cho- a poor move in his career. I think him make, 
doing this role is probably not a good idea for him. Uh, I don't think, I think, I, I don't know if it'll be a good movie. You know, it's kind of a dip down. I think that he's, his career is fine. <laughs> I think that he's got that Marvel money. He's good. <laughs> you know yeah. what they should have done? Then dump Mark Wahlberg uh, and, get, uh, and get um, uh, Robert Downey Jr. as Sully. <laughs> 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 Just really lean yes. into it hard. Yeah. <laughs> get Marissa Tomei in there too. Yeah. There you go. There you go. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. I mean, I'll I'll, I'll give it a chance. You know, I'm gonna I'm probably end up seeing the Monster Hunter movie, even though I know it'll be bad. Yeah. Did you guys see the two Raider on this show? No, nah, I didn't see any of them. I haven't seen the old no. ones or the new ones. I've only I seen saw the, the old first ones. old one with Angelina Jolie, mm-hmm. John Voight. Yeah. And I don't. I honestly don't remember much about it. It's pretty except forgettable. That, uh, there was side boob in one scene, and like thirteen mm-hmm. year old me was like, like boob boob that's so big it's back boob like from behind <laughs> side boob it's amazing <laughs> it's like i was just curious if you guys saw the alicia vikander one uh i heard it was mediocre <clears throat> not great but not bad she, yeah that's what i heard forgettable I like her I a mean, lot so i was like i want to see it at some point no nah, i uh so i'm just mm, i you know I'm, eh, that's eh. <laughs> Eh. I reserve judgment. I just I liked the picture. I thought it looked good. I thought the costume was good, but I was like, "What's this baby doing in this Uncharted movie?" Yes, Nathan you know, Drake like, is dead. Only because Tom Holland is baby. Only because there's it's like there's so much there. Our, our material already, and like the character is so established that to go so f- like not quite there, you know. And it's it's like I see what they were trying to do, but it's like he's not quite there you know maybe in like okay well let years? me ask you this if you weren't an uncharted fan you're a layman you haven't never heard of uncharted you just saw this picture of the guy who put hey that's the guy who plays spider-man look at him he's all he looks sort of like indiana jones there do you or do, do you think that's what it evokes in people who haven't played uncharted do you think that they are interested do you think that they i think mean i think good? they're like are they tom holland fans i mean they've I, seen I, i'm sorry I, I yeah, can't. so they're like, oh, what's this fucking movie? They love no idea. If they don't have any idea what the game is, of course they're going to see it because it's just Tom Holland. I, I can't do this thought experiment. I'm incapable yeah. of empathy. But, I, can't, I can't put myself <laughs> in the mind of, of someone who doesn't yeah. think like me but, because <laughs> clearly I have all the best incorrect opinions. In it doesn't mean it it'll be a good Uncharted movie. A smooth brain. It could still I'm be a, it'll, I'm a, not saying it'll be a good Uncharted movie. That's what I, I'm saying. <laughs> it's that it probably won't be a good Uncharted movie. I'm okay I, if with it that. isn't a good Uncharted movie, I don't think it'll be because of Tom Holland's performance or look. Oh, no, right. no. It'll be, it's going to be a bad I'm, movie. I'm pressing the eject button <laughs> on this conversation. Abort, How abort. dare you? <laughs> How dare the plug. you? This is <laughs> I'm, important. I'm smashing the computer with a baseball bat. We're, we're going to, we'll, maybe we'll talk about this more on a future episode. But for now, let's shift gears and talk about Doom. The reason we're here in the first place. E3M3. <laughs> Pandemonium. Do you remember when these episodes used to be like 20 minutes long, Andy? Yeah, those were the days, buddy. <laughs> those were the days. When me and you would record like four or five in a night. Uh-huh. <laughs> be but just rip roar and drunk hey, by the fourth one. <laughs> sorry for the content. Yeah, now we now we even <laughs> now we barely even talk about the topic of the episode. <laughs> yeah, we played Doom. Yeah, it's all right. It's good it was a good level. Hey, Next you time know, on the, the Doom movie. podcast. This this podcast is is it isn't really about games. It's really just about hanging out and riffing with your boys. Pretty it's much about games. <laughs> All right. Well, let's talk about Pandemonium, uh, fellas. What did you think of the Castle Pandemonium? Pretty fucking I, sick. Yeah, yeah. I, it was the first level of this episode where it kind of finally got back into the groove of things. Uh, I didn't feel like I was constantly clawing my way up to try and defeat the level. I yeah. felt like I had enough ammo and, uh, and, and, and tools to deal with what was happening. Well, let me, let me hit you with some quick stats. Uh, this is the third map of episode three. It is designed by Tom Hall and Sandy Peterson. We've got a Tom Hall alert, folks. Okay. okay. Uh, music is called Deep Tom in the Tom Holland. Code. Sandy Peterson. <laughs> uh, let, let's not go down that road again. <laughs> the music track. Just is saying, called, he'd be the perfect Doom guy. That's all I'm the saying. Music track, <laughs> he looks the part. No, no. Carl Urban is the perfect Doom guy, as we all know. Oh, yes. Uh, the music track is called "Deep in the Code" uh, by our friend Bobby Prince. Uh, um, and uh, part time is one thirty. 
We've got uh, six secrets on this stage. One sergeant, four specters, 34 imps, 14 demons, two barons of hell, two caco demons, and 14 lost souls. We've got a bunch of items, uh, including a shotgun, a chain gun, a rocket launcher, and a brand new weapon, ladies and gentlemen, the BFG 9,000, <laughs> thousand, thousand, thousand. What's that stand for? <laughs> It stands for, well, it uh, depends on who you <laughs> ask, but officially it stands for Big Fucking Gun. Mm, yes. So and, you know, I only, sh- I only shot it once. Isn't there only one shot? No, no. it uses like, the same ammo. Is there more ammo, ammo elsewhere? It's yeah. This, yeah, it's the same ammo as your pulse rifle. Yeah, it's oh. the plasma rifle. Yeah. Um, it uses plasma cells. It uses 40 cells per shot, to be exact. So that gives you a fair amount of ammo for it. And I'll say yeah. it fucks shit up real good. It really does. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it melted a baron with it. It was fun. That's what I used it on yeah. too. <laughs> One shot. Um, as we'll see later, it truly is a weapon of, of punishment and destruction. Um, the barons melt. Anything weaker than a baron melts. Uh, it's capable of melting huge groups of enemies in a single shot. Um, even the mighty cyber demon can be killed in as few as two, uh, two BFG shots which is pretty incredible. Does, does the BFG have like direct hit slash grazing different differentiations? Like, do I have to hit the bear, the cyber demon with a direct shot to kill it in two shots? That's an interesting question. And I'm glad you asked. Aaron. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I did find a YouTube video that goes into this extensively. Oh, uh, apparently there, there's a lot of interesting details about how the BFG works. So let me lay this out for you. It fires a giant green energy ball, um, which is the most obvious part, but actually the least damaging part of its effect. So this giant orb uh, flies forward somewhat slowly, I guess, until it hits something. Um, and uh, But also what happens, you might notice that like when you fire the orb, there are enemies like kind of close to it. There's like a little like green, like sparkly plasma stuff that appears around them or kind of down at their feet. Um, and they take damage from that as well. So here's what's actually happening when you fire the BFG. Um, in the direction uh, at which you fire the projectile, uh, 40 invisible rays also shoot out from Doomguy. So they emanate from Doomguy in a cone in the direction at which the BFG projectile was fired. And those 40 rays are what's actually doing the majority of the damage from the BFG. So uh, if you fire it uh, at a big group, then the 40 rays are going to emanate from Doom Guy and uh, hit all the enemies in the group. If you fire it at point blank range at an enemy like the Cyber Demon, all 40 invisible rays will hit the Cyber Demon at the same time and do quite a staggering amount of damage. That's how you can kill it in two shots, is by being in point so, blank range. So I think. Thinking back on it, they that might be why that comic was so weird. If you think about it, it had all these individual little beams going into the cyber demon. And if you think about what we were talking about, how they were just describing stuff to them and not actually showing them stuff, that that might make sense. That description might be why it looks so fucking weird. Dude, this is vindication for the Doom comic. I think so. <laughs> I told I you guys so. it was an amazing comic. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> we, we, were, we were critical of that one part for not being true to the game, but I, I think we have to reverse our position. It was, it's more, true than, it was right. more true than we even knew. But I right. think that it's got to be what happened is that they like just gave them a, a, like a write-up of like thing points from the game, and maybe they got real specific for some reason on the BFG and how to describe what it looked like. I don't know. That's that's a, that's interesting that you bring uh, that up. In uh, in Tom Hall's original design documents, the BFG was set to fire actually forty projectiles at once, and they ah. would kind of spray out, uh, kind of like a fire hose, and like they would be green and red. And ultimately, they scrapped it. And Romero said it was because a it was slowing the game down, and b it looked like like Christmas uh, like ornaments <laughs> flying out. <laughs> so they still kept the forty part, but it was forty ray tracers instead, yeah, and just okay. the one big projectile. Uh, so yeah, may, maybe the comic makes sense. Maybe they they were privy to secret knowledge yeah, about the inner workings of the BFG. 
I, Interesting. I think you're right. I think you're right, Sam. I think that you got, yep. <laughs> That's amazing. Fuck you, so, comic, for making us say bad things about you. This is your <laughs> fault. <laughs> you can do some interesting things like uh, because the rays emanate from Doom Guy and not from the projectile, if you fire the BFG projectile and then move to another location, those tracers will continue to shoot out. So you can fire it, then go around a corner and instantly hit the guys around the corner with the tracers. Ah, interesting. That is interesting. Okay. Because, gotta- okay, so when I was playing this, <clears throat> I saw a Baron of Hell. I had my BFG. I fired my BFG, went splat into a wall, but <laughs> I kept moving and I went around and it still killed the Baron. So I wonder yeah. if that happened with me. It very possibly could. Mm. I wonder what the timing is like on that. If you could be yeah. quick enough and like just turn yourself fast enough, you could get a lot like more, more damage done that way. Well, the, the, uh, the interesting thing is the tracers emanate in the direction at which the projectile was fired. So if you fire the projectile, oh, north, okay. they're always going to emanate north no matter where you are, which way you're facing. But you can still How move long do they, they emanate? go with you. I think they emanate for a few seconds. Um, okay, maybe so it's maybe more like about one second. running, like, here's where it went. Here's you curving around trying to hit stuff yeah. in between. Okay. Yeah. Like, imagine you know there's a bunch of guys around the corner. You you would face where they're going to be, fire the projectile, and then duck around Run the behind them yeah. and just shoot all those tracers okay. at them. Interesting. It turns the more you know. Doom guy into this emanating light of destruction <laughs> and energy. <laughs> like, <"Bah!"> he's, <laughs> uh, he's a cleric. He's turning undead. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> into, into plasma he's, dust. He's using lay on hands. <laughs> so yeah that's that's been a little bit of a look under the hood of the bfg 9000 uh we, we got some more stuff we want to say about it uh in terms of lore and things like that but for now let, let's talk a little bit about the level itself and uh what let me let me cue up a video here for you guys uh go ahead and vamp for time while i'm getting this going <laughs> uh yeah the, oh, wait I, never mind i have okay it. Ah, yeah, dang right. it i had some great vamps coming <laughs> All right, so this is the Castle Pandemonium. Um, do you guys know the origin of the word Pandemonium? It's from some ancient text, right? Wasn't Correct. it like a like a god in like maybe some Middle Eastern uh, ancient text well, or something? Well, I'll tell you, uh, it has a Greek origin, I think. Um, pan meaning like all, and demonium meaning like like the castle of all demons. But Pandemonium uh, first appears in uh, Paradise Lost by John Milton. Oh, um, really? The first and most successful work of fan fiction. <laughs> so Paradise it is Lost. Satan's castle in hell. It is the capital oh, of hell. So okay. we, we are apparently invading Satan's capital uh, city right now. Oh, interesting. It was very castle-like. Yes. For hell yeah. so far. Yeah, um, it's the most like... Uh, human structural thing we've been to like something that a human would build would build yeah. as opposed to like natural formations of hell that we've sort of been in like yeah, yeah. it was like there was like an architect for this one there's even yeah. at one sign there's a, a poison signs above above some damage floor did you guys notice <laughs> yeah. that well there's i noticed that there were doors in the beginning and that uh-huh. there's a secret room that is just it's like you're going through the level it's all wood castle flesh and then it's like um, a completely solid metal room underneath uh, underneath the level. That's or, true, yeah. I was like, that seems really weird. Like, I wonder if, and it was like, there's no detail on it. It's very smooth. It's like, I wonder if this was like a like a memory issue where it was like, all right, well, we got this extra room. This one right here. Yeah. It's like, but we can't put any detail on it. We need the most plain wall we can get because we can't load any more textures. And without Do you think hell is down. like Disney World, where most of it is like actually on the second floor, but un- and underneath that, there's just like plain, stark, like metal walls <laughs> <laughs> where like the staff goes when they need to change clothes. Yeah, they're then down you there go having back their smoke breaks and shit. And <laughs> what I've like, heard, what it's like to work at Disneyland, I'm guessing it's very similar to hell. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, got their asses. Mm, gotcha, Disney. Uh but yeah, I I thought it just felt really weird. It felt like like the walls before they had textured it. So it was just it's like okay, whatever. <laughs> it's a Tom yeah. Hall part, I'll say. I'll yeah, just say yeah, that. Yeah. We'll we'll go ahead and blame Tom Hall for that one. There was also a part that I had to reload to do where there's a elevator that comes down when you hit like an eyeball. 
but if you, yeah. I fell off of it and I couldn't find a way to lower it again, so I had to I did the exact that. same thing. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I had to. That, I thought that was a bit frustrating. And yeah, it's a it's a one time thing. There's there's a few of those in this game, like a one time switch, one time elevator. I can't remember. Was that worth it? I can't even. Remember it was a secret. It. I think uh, yeah. I don't remember exactly. Oh no, it was armor. It was a blue armor. Okay, so because you could see it from right. the ground, yeah. it was up on the like. There's like. You go like through the main hall and there's like two places that are up high that you can see. It was the left one with the armor. Okay. Those are cool. I like the sense of verticality in this stage. Like you go up the stairs at the start, there's the shotgun that lowers on the pedestal. Then you can go up on like those two like walkways. Like yeah. it's almost like you're on the castle battlements or something. Mm -hmm. um, so I like that you go up and down, you know, I, I like the diversity of it. it like you said, it, it really feels like a castle. I thought... Um, this the invincibility item i every time i've gotten it and no matter what level or what episode i feel like i get it after i was supposed to use it yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. like yeah, i got yeah. it and like couldn't find anything and then then like i thought maybe where i used the bfg i even felt like i was wasting the bfg because there was like one baron i used it on him and then there's like another part with uh caco demons and uh Oh, is it Lost Souls? Like the screaming? I always forget their name. Yeah, uh, Lost Souls. But I was afraid. I was like, man, is this going to be like the rocket launcher? If I shoot this too close to something, am I going to get fucked? So I just <laughs> shot him with the shotgun. I didn't, I didn't bother <laughs> shooting it down the hallway. I was reading something about uh, the PC uh, version of this game. I play on Switch, of course. So the controls are pretty different. Like the way you switch weapons on Switch, Sam, for your edification, you press L and R to cycle between your weapons. And then the D-pad uh, is mapped to specific weapons. Like up is shotgun, right is chain gun, down is rocket launcher, and left is plasma cannon, I think. So, I, and I'm, it, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think on PC, you just press a button, uh, a numerical button to just jump to well, the weapon you want. It's Interesting you bring that up because I, I accidentally found a second way to do it. So I have a, uh, a Logitech G600 that has mouse numbers, but like it's got number the number key on the side. And it's every weapon is, it's like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. But I found out today that if you hit Q or E, it pulls up a bar across the top that has like a red version, like little side anim, like a drawing of each gun that you can cycle through. When you, when you stop and click, it'll pull that weapon up. Uh, yeah, I had no idea uh, you could do that. On, on the Switch, that's what it looks like for me, too. Oh, okay. L and R. Yeah, for me, it's just a hit of the button. So I, I switch weapons pretty quickly on the fly a lot, sometimes on accident. Yeah, <laughs> it, I find it a little a little more cumbersome to switch weapons on the Switch version. Like, yes. if, I'm in a, if I'm in a firefight, I usually want to just keep blasting with what I have. And if I need to switch, I try to back off. Um, but I found out something interesting. Apparently, on the PC version, maybe on every version, if you're holding down fire and then you switch to the to any weapon, you'd keep firing whatever weapon you switch to automatically. Except the rocket launcher, it won't do that. Uh, just in case you would blow yourself up. Yeah. Okay. And apparently, the BFG also works like that, probably to conserve ammo. Huh. That's interesting. Surprisingly considered of Romero <laughs> and the boys. Yeah. 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 It, it did not help at all as the many times I've almost killed myself with the rocket launcher <laughs> <laughs> so uh, i wanted to mention this room um it's the room with the blue key door but you're kind of you kind of step outside into like an outside atrium and then uh there's this area that looks kind of it's almost like a desk or like a podium that you step up to and just like stepping onto it uh triggers like a door to open and i just thought it was an interesting room it's like almost like a like a security substation like you would see in like Star Trek or Star Wars or something. And this is like a, a console that you have to go behind to like press the button to activate it. Hmm. There were a lot of, um, in this level, like there was two or three parts where I was surprised I could walk up onto. They were like, like places that like I could not walk onto. They seemed the same height on the last level that I could just get up into and get everything inside. Like those little flesh pockets. I don't know what you call it, like faces inside. Yeah, they were, yeah. And they were like the same height up. I was just kind of surprised you could get up those. Yeah, yeah. And I was that too. console place where you went up, I was surprised that it let me up on there. It seems kind of like, just interesting, like that what's when they decide what you can climb on, what you can't when they're making. I love this room, by the way, that I just ran through where it's got just the regular stone walls, but the texture is constantly spinning in a circle for some yeah, reason. Yeah, yeah. I, I like... Let's make it a little different and cool. I thought that was neat. It's kind of disorienting a little bit. 
Yeah, there were some it's, trippy areas like that with moving walls, and it was kind of like, whoa, whoa. It's like it's a stone wall, but it's in hell. <laughs> <laughs> you almost sounded like Jeff Goldblum for a second there. <laughs> oh, there's oh. some poison signs, yeah. Yeah, I, it makes me wonder, like, are there OSHA regulations in hell? <laughs> yes, but they're horrible. <laughs> this, in this, this is like, a, you know, the for this workplace environment, the uh, the the architects had to put up uh, poison signs, uh, in, in compliance with, with Satan's hell regulations. <laughs> See, maybe, maybe it's a sign that hell is adapting more and more to, to with human stuff. So like, this is like reclaimed walls and, and they just happen to have signs and stuff on there. They're, they're absorbing the technology of earth and also the bureaucracy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, uh, but you know, cause you know, the cyber demon has like mixed parts in it and everything. Mm-hmm. So I wonder, I wonder if that's, I don't know. It was probably they already had the room built from another level and they needed the poison room, so they just threw it in there. <laughs> I, I think this is what I think that's what Paradise Lost is all about. I think uh John Milton's epic classic was just <laughs> all about uh hell slowly succumbing to the petty tyrannies of earth like bureaucracy. This part right here where you come into a room and there's a pit and you hit a switch and the pinkies come up. I came at it from the opposite side and fell in the pit with the pinkies. Yeah, I did. Too. Uh, <laughs> I didn't came see up, the switch, and so yeah, I was curious. I didn't see I the switch like, either. Oh, jump in and see what happened. It was on the other side for me, so I got I killed them and came up and then went over and flipped the switch and it raised and it lowered the platform. Like, oh, yeah, I came at I came at it from both sides. I wound up going like coming to one side, not seeing anything, going all the way around, and then still I also I missed the switch, and so I was just like, well. Should I jump down there? They were making fun of me that one time because I didn't jump down in that pit <laughs> for a secret. I mean, I, fuck those guys. I'm not jumping down there. <laughs> one thing I, they could have done now, it could have been for, like I said, memory reasons. It would have been nice if they, like, every switch was just, like, on a platform that stuck out just a little bit off the yeah. wall. So when you're going down, you would see it. Because I know they couldn't make it, like, everything's just textures and sprites, so they can't really make like 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 a fully modeled switch with like a full 3d lever easily at this point but but they could have at least made a box that came out a little bit so you would kind of see it easy. i don't think they cared if you missed it i think that they were just like yeah, you missed, yeah. You, missed I mean, you know just just things we were wishing for you know <laughs> yeah uh i like the uh the intestine pillars and in, yeah uh, I, they look like brains to saw. me like brains more to me but but yeah uh in some kind of awful wall you know it's it's we're we're deep into Cronenberg territory at this point. We're yeah. we're we're in video drone, baby. Yeah. It's weird that they that they've reverted back to the exit sign and the door, the mechanical door. Well, see, again, I think maybe you know Satan was like, oh wow, we see all this stuff in this on this moon. Wow, man, it's got signs. Oh, I fall in the poison all I've the always... time in my castle. <laughs> Get a grab a couple of those. We we need to. We're getting too many workplace compensation suits. We need to make sure we put up these signs so it's people. It's really can costing me a lot of money. All right, get it. now. People can't find their way out of here, and they're, they're looking around for the exit and falling into all the poison. So you're gonna put up those goddamn signs. You're gonna stop prodding my ass about it. <laughs> I'm Satan. Uh, God damn it. Ring, 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 ring. Uh, hello, yes, this is Satan. Uh, yeah, uh, Mr. Morningstar, uh, we, we, we were getting a, a, a record number of OSHA complaints at the at the pandemonium well, location. Uh, I mean, it is hell. Uh, I mean, it seems that seems like that would be uh, a good thing. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. What to do with that, really. <laughs> mm-hmm, yes, sir. But you are still going to have to respond to each and every one of these, please. No. Yes, that's we got a good uh, fifty thousand of them. Look, I put signs near the poison. Oh, oh. What you gonna next thing? What you're gonna make me take the poison out or something? <laughs> Jesus Christ! This is hell. Oh, no, 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 sir. No, 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 Mister Satan. Poison is fine. They just as long as it's properly labeled. Okay, that's great news. Oh, God, I'm trapped <laughs> in a hell of my own making. <laughs> I'm calling Jesus after this. We're gonna have a few words. <laughs> All right, uh, fellas. Um, before we wrap up today. Uh, I did want to say a few more things about the BFG 9000. Um, let me let me share this with you. Apparently, the BFG 9000 is based on a children's toy that I guess was popular at the time when they were making this game. Um, so check this out. It's called like the like the Roar Shot uh, or something like that. <laughs> That's um, a great fun. Let me let me show this to you. I didn't believe this at first, but um, so this is a real gun that was on the market. Um, when uh, when Romero and Carmack and everyone were making this game, and apparently they loved it. Check this out. 
when uh, when they turned it on its side and like mirrored the image, that's how they huh. got the BFG. <laughs> Interesting. You can tell it, it's like it, it really is just that gun. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Hundred percent. Is that the gun that went made like the? <laughs> apparently, it made a fuckload of noise. Was that? Uh, apparently it did make a fuckload of noise. <laughs> I bet it was. Uh, it's hilarious. <laughs> uh, l- let me let me confirm what the actual name of this thing is. Yeah, it's called the Roar Gun um, by some company that made toys. So there you go. The Roar Gun is the the source of the BFG nine thousand. Um, BFG, of course, has appeared in many many other games and other media things. Um, it's in Doom 2, it's in Doom 3, it's in Final Doom, um, it's in Doom Eternal um, in, in a pretty uh, a pretty sick way, as we know. Um, uh, I, I love how you get it in Doom Eternal, where you're going through that facility and like gradually, you know, lowering the barriers and making your way in um, until you finally get it, and then you get to use it on that huge army of like revenants outside. Doom 2016, you mean? Yeah, sorry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You know what? What I, mean. I what I really you know like I about mean. that too is how you get it and you go to Mars or whatever, and like they've made giant cannons out of them. Like mm-hmm. they have like the huge fuck off cannons on the on the surface that's using the same BFG energy. I always like that little little like attention to detail. In Doom Eternal, don't you shoot one of those at Mars? Maybe I don't know. I really I kind of stopped playing it. Honestly, I. uh I should play it again, but every time I play it, I just kind of want to play Doom 2016 instead. Mm, that's mm. a bummer. Yeah, I'll, I'll well, beat it one day, but it's it's very very low on my list right now. <laughs> uh, so as we know um, from Sam's background image, the BFG is also in uh, Doom the film from 2005, uh, wielded by Dwayne the Rock Johnson. Um, we've we've kind of debated before, like who's the real Doom guy in that movie, The Rock or Carl Urban? um the it, you know the rock they, does get to wield the bfg they make it like it's him like the rock but then like they subvert our expectations and turn him into a bad guy it's really dumb i didn't like that movie. <laughs> it's not a very good movie it's pretty no. generic and forgettable but but i mean carl urban is definitely the doom the doom guy he's well he's like some kind of angel or something i forgot what they said in the movie like he's 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 got some kind of like special bullshit thing that 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 he that makes him special. <laughs> you have, you have forgot the what it was. Bullshit you are blood. the the you must fight the demons cuz you've got angel blood or something stupid like that. <laughs> He's like, "Oh, no, I'm just Billy Butcher and I'm really pissed about Homelander raping my wife." <laughs> Ooh, son of a bitch. <laughs> it's some shit. I'm sorry I said that word, but it is. That's what it is. And it's... now I gotta bleep it and come on. <laughs> come on! It's bad. It's bad. That movie's so bad. It's so well, stupid. Uh, so, but it does have the BFG, so I guess that's uh, something that's going for it. Um, although I think they call it, they don't call it big fucking gun. They call it like biofusion gun or some bullshit like that. Um, but it really made an impact on gaming. I mean, fellas, can you think of another weapon that's as famous or well known as the BFG nine thousand. I Maybe mean, the you master got your sword from Legend of Zelda. I was I was about to say you got your master swords. You maybe the the energy sword from Halo at this point. Maybe yeah. yeah. Um, I feel like that's kind of tapered off. I would so I would try and think we can narrow it down to guns only. Like is chainsaw there any other... gun, chainsaw gun. Yeah, that's another. One. I think that's pretty close. You know, uh, but like, I think gun blade from final fantasy eight Would people like, maybe you can just say BFG. And I think it's like, no one's like, what's that mean? And if you play games, at least, you know, like it's kind of, it's pretty iconic kind of thing. Even I think, yeah. Cause you know, like, like the master sword, there's certain weapons that people know who game, even if they haven't played doom, they've, you think if people say Keyblade, they, that that's got that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I kind of think so. I I think that's, I think it's a bit narrower maybe. Oh, uh, speaking of Keyblades, I got I got to hit you with this real quick, guys. Uh, my girlfriend had the brilliant idea that what if in Kingdom Hearts, instead of Disney, it was Hanna-Barbera characters? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I don't know if that would be as good. <laughs> <laughs> if, well, they took it like, if they took it like the Harvey Birdman route, where everything's all fucked, like all the characters are fucked in the head and like and like all, all screwy and shitty and like they're trying to get 
little little Barney little Bam Bam rubble off of drugs or something like like that <laughs> would be just great. imagine like Snagglepuss joining your party and being like heavens to Murgatroyd Ansem's trying to open the doorway to Kingdom Hearts. <laughs> Okay, how about Exit this? stage run. I don't think it would resonate with people as much as Disney does. I have it's a, a kingdom do, made right out of hearts. And we do Silent Hill and Steve Bloom characters. <laughs> what? Because <laughs> because all the Steve Bloom uh, movies were like traumatizing, right? They always Wait, have. Hold on a second, Steve Bloom. Steve, no, no, Steve Bloom. Steve Bloom's uh, the voice of Spike no, who, Spiegel I, and Cowboy Bebop. I, I was going to say. I think we're I think we're crossing streams. The here guy. Five goes west. Don Bluth. That was oh, the yeah, Don yeah. Bluth <laughs> and Silent Hill. Oh shit! Don yeah, Bluth there you Kingdom go. Hearts. <laughs> I mean, some kind of survival horror with Don Bluth. This the characters in it. Yeah, you go. You like the all dogs go to heaven. Like oh, level would God. automatically fuck you. Like <laughs> yeah, Secret of Nim. Mm-hmm. Every all that shit. You, you know? just you just have to watch uh, Littlefoot's mom die over and over and over again. <laughs> just, God, just over and over, over and over again. <laughs> and she tells you to 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 follow past the statue of, that looks like a log neck, and you just start weeping. Littlefoot, <laughs> give in to the darkness inside your heart. <laughs> <laughs> now, I would enjoy a game where Littlefoot joins your party. Like that would be fucking sick. Okay, well, let's get back to uh, Doom. Um, just a couple more things to say about the BFG here. Um, it, it's in every Doom game. It's also in the uh, the Quake games. It even made the jump there. Lots of references to the BFG and lots of other different games. Uh, one that I thought of, Sam, maybe maybe you'll agree with this. In the Ratchet and Clank games, the Rhino, the the gun, the like yeah, overpowered that's, mm-hmm. gun. That's definitely like a BFG for that series because it's 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 kind of it's. And well, even even now that we talked about how the BFG actually works, it makes even more sense because the Rhino is just some kind of like rockets or bullets or lasers, that, yeah. but it's got like 40 barrels on the front. Shoots like mm-hmm. 100 projectiles at once or something. Okay, well, uh, why don't we bring it on home, fellas? Um, sounds like we all enjoyed uh, the Castle Pandemonium, the, the capital of hell. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, next time on the program, we will be venturing deeper into the inferno um we will be uh leaving the castle pandemonium and entering house of pain the fourth level of episode (laughs) three (laughs) can't wait oh god (laughs) uh sam do you have any words of wisdom for our listeners at home uh you know it's hard to follow up wiping your own ass just two times i had had to mention it for a third time that might have to be your official sign off just (laughs) Wipe your own ass, ladies and gentlemen. There it is. And Aaron, uh, what do you want to say to the folks at home? I want to say thank you for listening, everybody. Please go to onestationatatime.com for more episodes and to follow our socials. We post some stuff sometimes, and it's okay. Uh, thank you for listening. Please like, share, and subscribe. We really appreciate it. And everyone, please do as Andy is about to say. Save and continue.